The business motherfucker. The Daily Read. Your source for news, politics, sports, and all things trending. Here's your host, Marcus Gentry. Yes. To each other or just to your standard? Yeah. No, see, you're 32. Mm-hmm. You ever been married? No. Any children? Not yet. Uh huh. Well, when a man asks you to go out, you decide what man you give your information to or what man you don't give your information to. That's a ranking. How tall are you? Five five. Five five. Do you care if a man is of only five six when you date him? Um. That, that's a ranking. The pause is a ranking. College? I did. Mm-hmm. Did I did. your mother go to college? Um, she didn't. Your father oh, go to college? Did, did your father yeah. go to college? He has a trade. Uh-huh. So your mother and father didn't go to college. They made you. And it's funny that the very people who come from nothing got so high of a standard for the next group of men. Uh, you picked the right one. You know, housewife, <laughs> I'm just imagining kind of being a slave. <laughs> so that's Let me stop you right here. Let me stop you right here. Let me stop you right here. Mm-hmm. Where are your people from? Uh, my mom's from Trinidad and my dad's from Jamaica. So I see that's hold on, my, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why? We don't need white. We don't need white supremacy, racism. Well, now we got is this: that you think that the women who came before you were slaves. So that's what a traditional housewife is: taking care of and not working. To me, yes. Oh, okay. So, uh, and that's getting the sh- into the stick. Uh, from what I've seen so far, yes. What percentage of men earn $650,000 or more? Well, from the conversation I heard you speak about earlier, um, it sounded like it was less than 10%. 10% of men earn $100,000 or more. Okay. Top 5% around a quarter of a million. 300,000, you start dropping around 3%. You get over 500,000, you're talking about 1%. And you're talking more than that. So you're talking about a fraction of a percent. So if he can meet, so if a man, they can meet that, and how tall, you said, you how tall, five what? Say that again. And how tall are you again? You said you're five what? I'm five, 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 eight with heels. Okay. So how tall does he need to be? Um, Anywhere like five, eight and taller. I'm flexible. Okay. Um, if this man can meet your socioeconomic standard, which is rather on the higher side, I think it's fair to say you can meet most women's. What do you think a man who makes that kind of income, what are some of the things they would want from a woman? I definitely feel they want a baddie, for sure. A what? A baddie, like they want somebody who is like mm-hmm. a 10 and 10, 10, for sure. Um, somebody who's well kept, well put together dresses well, speaks well, um, articulate, great conversation, and be in a crowd with anybody and be able to be put together. You just described a man. I described a man? Mm -hmm. You're you're describing the prototypical Tyler Perry Sex in the City uh, metro female fantasy. What do you need from a man financially? For him to hold it down. What does that mean? So what that means is, you know, as a woman and I- Put a dollar value on it. Don't, don't, don't give me the yearbook answer. Um, at least, at least a minimum of six figures. Minimum. <laughs> <laughs> it's not many options. That's another thing. Oh, there are plenty of options. 50, 51% of black men are single and childless. 64% are in the middle class. See what they're not- But a lot of them are ugly. Oh, oh, no, no, no. First off, check that. Because you start that shit, I'm going to get real raw with you. But it's big. I'm going to get real raw with you. Check that shit. Because I have not made any any presumptions about looks or anything with you, so I'm not going to insult men. You can't. Well, I look a mess now, but I don't think I have to settle with a man that I don't find Okay, in. let's do it. What would you rate yourself on a scale from one to ten? Just your face. You cannot use seven. A ten. <laughs> oh, poor baby. 
Now let's try this again. So I'm not you are not the most beautiful woman in the world. Cosmopolitan ain't trying to get you to be on the cover. People ain't de deemed you one of the most beautiful women in the world. You First thing you came out of your mouth, you said you're a 10, and you're not a 10. Fresh face out of the shower, your natural hair, you cannot use seven. On a regular schmegla degla day, I'd say maybe a six. Okay. I will give you a six. And a six is cute. A five is average. Mm -hmm. So if you're a cute woman, that's one step above average. Okay. Average means average. You look at your look in your 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 family history, and most people are average, right at the top of the bell curve. But if you take an av if you take a cute woman mm -hmm. who's overweight mm -hmm. that adjusts her S and V up or down. Down. Thank you. So that makes her average as a, that makes as those two numbers they kind of average out you would be an average woman and as an average about an average woman in this country an average black woman the average black man in this country earns forty one thousand five hundred dollars for a lifetime no more no less no herculean methods no lottery no businesses that's what he's going to make that's your husband what if I have degrees? Thank you. See? See? I want you guys to understand. She just asked me. And I told her, yeah, what is a woman? has her SMV. Now, these women actually think because they can make themselves higher SMV because of a degree. That does not work. Men have never picked women based upon your degree. That is why you could be on fries at McDonald's, but if you look like Kelly Rowland, you can marry a millionaire. So I could take a plumber and, and have him have an entire business because that's the way that my mind works. And so I would make that work for us. Put your penis up. <laughs> Somebody you laughing. You, you see what you just did? I just... You you see what you just did? See how I, I gave you I gave this? you a man who's I gave you a man who's out doing just fine on his own and you got to go make him make him earn one and and and, and be like you. That ain't going to work, boo. It's not. So Cuz you're going to emasculate the hell out of him. Because it's like, well, now I'm trying. I, I've been, Thomas, you've been a plumber for 20 years and you just happy. Yeah. But now she's got me trying to have a truck and this and that going over here. And that. But why? Well, because she's used to working bags. And, you know, she thinks we can become accredited investors. And, it, and what's that going to be like sitting up in the bed on Sunday when Thomas wants to sleep in? Hey, you know, you should get up and start that website. We can do this. We can do that. Now, you see why I say somebody got to be on the same frequency as me, somebody that enjoys preparing and creating a masculine frequency nice right. um i'm a 30 I'm, I'm a 37 year old woman All right. um two children okay i do not have a problem getting a man it's just i attract weak men okay i am celibate i've been celibate for two years what i've been celibate for two years where did where that come from is I'm want to know is that the reason why? Mm -mm. You just you two people that came out of you. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying I'm trying to understand what what's the what's the philosophy here? You're not a virgin. You got two people came out of you. What, what what's, what's ooh, going on? Oh, that's oh no, you did not. Oh no, you did not have the nerve to bring vagina out here and close it up at 37 years old with two kids the out reason, here. And I'm gonna tell you the reason behind that is because when I do open my legs, they, the men, be, uh, they get crazy. P-whipped? Yes. I, so the, so the I, solution I got, I got is, so, so let me get this I right. So let me yes. get this right. So you meet a man that's a high value man, a, de a, a, a good guy. You think you're going to be celibate for what? What? Do you marry? Yes. You got your goddamn mind. <laughs> men judge the way we judge. And yes, like I said, you have no problem getting men to pay you attention. You've got no problem attracting men, but yeah. getting a man to take you seriously. And would you like to be married? I would. Okay. And that's a problem because you're asking a man to become a stepfather. You're asking, let's say you're asking me to come in and take care of 
one man's child, a man's two children. Uh-huh. I didn't create those. It's all downside. I've been a stepfather. It's a horrible deal. What about the men that have children of their own? They want a stepmother. Well, again, you still act as though you're like most men at this age. Okay, listen. I'll answer it. See, you're still you're still speaking as if you have leverage in this thing, and I'm trying to level set you. Even if I have children, I got more options than you. I can go find a woman with no kids, because I can afford both of you. If I can afford to, if I can afford to take care of you and your kids, I can afford to take care of her and her, and no kids. Is your circumstance harder or easier than your grandmother and your great grandmother? Exponentially easier. We have right. access it's to information great. we didn't Exponentially have. Exponentially easier, but you're handling it worse. Your grandmother, your great grandmother, actually could work with a black man with more trauma. Because they understood that the black woman and the black man are on the same side. Now that we are all free and independent and to, we could do whatever we want to, why would we think to, you know, be one with the black man? We, we even you. think that being- Thank you, thank you, thank you. Clip it, slice it, put it on Worldstar. She said it, not me. Now that you're independent, you don't, don't need have to be with it. There you go, there you go, the and, there, and there you go, and there you go. To live the life you want, to eat, travel, hair, makeup, shopping, caring for family. Come on, give it to me. Don't don't hide it. Uh, Five hundred thousand. All right. What percentage of men earn that? Huh. Very little. What percentage? No. I mean, if you're what? talking all races, I would think. I just said, what percentage of men earn that? Oh, maybe like what seven percent or something. Not one percent. One percent. Three percent earn around three hundred thousand more. Five hundred thousand on the top. One percent of all men. And guess what? Men don't go and do what they have to do to become those kind of men. And what age do you think those men are when they're earning that kind of money? Forties. Right. And what do men want who have fought in corporate America or fought in the work world for twenty plus years? They want kids and a legacy. True, and, but I do want kids now. That was my but, past. But that's, that just, but, but that's recent. What you said earlier was what I believe to be the truth. I want to focus on my husband. Great. That will make you a good first wife or a starter wife. But typically men want legacy. They want a woman who's going to give them three or four kids for that half a million dollars they're earning because they got to pass it on somewhere. They don't want to leave it to their dog. <laughs> I don't think all men are trash. And I also want to again came in and shut this shit down. Tommy Lauren is teaching black women a very valuable lesson. A very valuable lesson. What is that? You cannot just drag men and get away with it. The point I made is notice Tommy's demeanor. Notice how she's coming into Fix this. She said all men are trash. That's what she said. All men are trash. She didn't edit anything. She doubled and tripled down. She was she was full of that uh 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 because she didn't get any pushback. Because what is why? Because this playbook had worked in the black community for 50 years. But see the white community, other communities where they have family system. Uh, patriarchy, family values, if nothing else, they have seen what is happening in our community. What happens when you let this gender war take root? Men are pushing back and they are shutting this crap down. Would I rate myself? Mm -hmm, just your face. Uh, my face when I wake up, five, but when I put myself together, six. Okay. And how tall are you? Five, five. Dress size. I'm sorry? Your dress size. A three. Okay. So that makes you, if you give yourself a five, that's average. Yes. So average looking women tend not to get high earning men. They tend to get average men. So, um. Did you, did you, I mean, stop right there. Stop right there. 
Stop right there, breathe and digest. You're 35 years old and you can look around and see the world. You don't tend to see higher earning men with average looking women off rip. If you do see them, they got them. They got their average looking woman when they were both really young and he built his way up. But a man earning the kind of money you're talking about does not go for an average looking woman. Welcome to the Daily Read and I am your host, Marcus Gentry. I'm just your average truck driver. Okay? I'm just your average truck driver. But today we got a good show. It's going to be a controversial show. And I thought about whether I was going to do a show on how Israel is committing mass genocide against the Palestinians. And then I thought about this show. I said to myself, I'm going to get this show out the way first. Probably next week we'll do something about Israel and Palestine. But the title in this show is America has a whore problem. You heard it here first. This is going to be controversial. People are going to get in my inbox and type all kinds of crap. The feminist movement is real. Make no mistake about it, men. And some of you ladies who know, the feminist movement is real. You got, and, and Kevin Samuels with his suits and, 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 you know, his backlighting and, you know, his demeanor. He was trying to tell you people, some of you women are delusional delusional and when people like me come along and tell you five sixes and sevens not eight nines and tens you five sixes and sevens when you try to act like you are eight nine or ten you ain't settling it's funny to us because most people live in their area all their life within 150 miles of where they were born follow me now the bad women in their area they're gonna always know of those bad women in their area but just like Kevin Samuels it's some men out here who have traveled and seen what real bad women look like they think something's wrong with us. Like, when we don't put up with this whole feminist movement, every woman's a queen, even if she's a dog-ass whore. We don't play that. Because we've seen showstoppers. I was in Connecticut at a Walmart. I had to send my mother some money home. And there was this woman looked like she was from Brazil. She was thick thighs ass out she had some a gray sweatpants on and a white t-shirt and she was doing her shopping over there in the in the fruit aisle the lettuce aisle you know the vegetables every man in that Walmart stopped and was like damn <laughs> what's she from showstopper I'm talking about a real showstopper and then when you get back to your area and you see these five sixes and sevens acting like they high and mighty and they better than you you look at these people like man you crazy and when you and when you let them know that you ain't going for that feminist bullshit you get attacked they think something wrong with you they think you against women nah it's a mental health issue going on in the women in our society not just black women okay not just black women women in general in America it's something loose up here it ain't connecting when you got 90% of the women in America pursuing 10% of the men I'm going to say it again when you got 90% of the women in America pursuing 10% of the men and calling the rest of the men, the bus drivers, the construction workers, 
dusty and broke when you don't even make more money than the guy you call it dusty or broke it's funny to us it's hilarious and when we push back on it and tell you to get out of our face we might even call you a bitch bitch get out of my face with that, with that bullshit you get mad at us but when Kevin Samuels tell you he does it in a proper way you know with, like I said with the suit and everything it's received a little better I'm not with that you come at me with that high and mighty stuff I'm gonna shut it down like man please get out my face and this is not just women from the age of 20 or 18 to 30 this is this is all women across the spectrum from the age of 18 to 60 nurses doctors lawyers women of, 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 of education are turning into whores whores let me tell you why let me tell you why you see when these top tier men that make millions of dollars these football players entertainers you know the rappers the singers the basketball players say 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 you in a city right you in a city there's only so many bad women in that city and we're gonna make up a fake club okay follow along with me now people this is for all my people who like for me to break things down for you you in a city and they have this club called explosion times two it's a fake club explosions times two all the nba players the movie stars all the rappers everybody in your city goes to this club okay all the five sixes and sevens get dressed up call it girl love girl i heard some superstars gonna be down at club explosions times two now these are five sixes and sevens these are your normal girls the normal women that work at costco's the gas station normal women now who should be pursuing normal men okay they get dressed up and go to this club where all the nba stars is at all the eight nines and tens follow along with me now are in the private section with the millionaires these are your Megan the Stallion type women think about what I'm saying the eight nines and tens which are the showstoppers the women that stop traffic like oh man who is that those women go to the after party at the mansion and get turned out get passed around get slutted out you don't see it you don't hear about it but it's happening all the five sixes and sevens get turned away they come to the club they see the stars sitting up in the booth they got all the beautiful women around them later on they jump in their Lambos go back to the mansion and slut these women out get them on cocaine the five sixes and sevens the average women they go back to their home and their community they go back to Costco and act like they eight nines or tens I'm just gonna say it bitch you couldn't even go to the mansion you couldn't even get invited to the mansion to get slurred out by the millionaires but you running around us, the average man, acting like you were eight, nine, or a ten. Like you the queen of the universe. And when guys like me shut that shit down, like man, come on man. Get the hell out of here. You got people that would literally attack you. Like you a toxic masculine man. This is not toxic masculinity. We just telling you, shut it down. You were an average ass woman that couldn't even get invited to the mansion and get slutted out like the other eight, nines, and tens. You were seven at best. 
Kevin Samuels was trying to tell you. What would a multi-millionaire do with a woman who's a five, six, or seven, who has two or three babies? What would he do with you? When he can fly to Brazil and get a fine-ass woman to lay up with and turn out and have his homeboy have sex with her. What do he want with you? This is the crazy mindset of these masculine females. They looking at these eight, nines, and tens thinking that these eight, nines, and tens are having a good life because they hanging with these millionaires. But you don't realize what these women are going through. I've seen it. I done walked in hotel rooms at the Radisson where they got one beautiful girl butt naked standing on her head. Ain't nobody forced her to do it. She giggling. She laughing. Twerking on her head butt naked in the corner. You got all these ballers walking around <laughs> pouring champagne on her. Y'all ain't seeing this. It's a mental, it's a mental issue going on with American women. And when you call it out and when you tell them, man, look, you are five, six, or seven at best. You can play that high society with them beta males, but you can't play that with me because I cuss your ass out. People get offended because I'm not falling for that. This next clip. This is a this is a bad one. I'm talking about this woman right here is so delusional. It's crazy. It's crazy. Let's get into this next clip. I want y'all to see this. I supposed to settle for a uh, regular type dude. How tall are you? I am five three. Dress size? I am a medium. Dress size, number? Um, a 10. How much did you weigh the last time you weighed yourself? 157. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Fresh face out of the shower, just your natural face. On a scale from one to 10, what would you this rank your look? My natural face. What, okay, fresh face out of the shower, your natural face. You can't use seven. What would you rank yourself? One to ten. A six. Okay. A six is right above average. A five is average, right? You're five foot three, a hundred, a dress size ten, so that's above average weight. Five foot three, you should be roughly dress size four. Four six, 125 pounds. Even if I believe you're 157, 160, you're almost 33 pounds, 33 percent over your ideal target weight. I and you have listen, weight. listen, listen. If you're if you're average to cute looking, mm -hmm. if you're below average health from a weight standpoint, and you have two children, overall, does that make you below average, average, or above average? Factor all those things in together. So right there, this woman is a five at best. I'm going to tell y'all something about women like this, because I've been to some of the small towns in America. She might be number two or number one out of all her girlfriends who look the best out of all of her girlfriends. They might be chubby, you know. The chubby girls wear the tight stuff and go out thinking they're cute with the little purple hair and stuff like that. She's delusional. Straight delusional. I run across women like this all the time. You know, you walk up to them at a bar, like, what's up? You know, you just trying to hit. You already know you ain't finna wife up nothing like that. And she look at you like, you ain't even worth your time. 
It's crazy. I laugh and I walk off. <laughs> you know, this is what I'm saying about America has a whore problem. These women are willing to whore themselves out for men with money. But what they ain't getting is the men with money, number one, ain't messing with you. And number two, this is the very important one. Why would they mess with you when you got two kids, two baby daddies, they're a liability to a millionaire? Not only are you not a showstopper, but your kids and, and everything you bring to the table, the box is used, you know, it's used more times than what people probably really know. Because women are very secretive about they, they, they body count. Except for the whores, the flat out whores, they'll tell you. They'll get on these shows and be like, yeah, I done slept with a hundred men. But these normal women, they ain't gonna tell you. But the box is used. You got two kids by two different men or one different man, and then you ain't a dime. You a five at best. Delusional. Let's keep going. So why should you get anything over? Then why should you get above average? What do you mean settle for? You should get I what see, you are. I see, I see millionaires with average women all the time. Let me stop it again. She right. There are millionaires with women who don't look like dime pieces. Most of these guys, like these CEOs of Apple, who got these mediocre looking wives, they knew them women in college. They knew them women when they was in high school. These ain't no bad women that they met after they became millionaires. See, this is what she talking about. She thinking she got a chance because she seen somebody like Bill Gates with his wife you know, so she thinking in her mind, I got a chance. No, you don't. These new age millionaires, they ain't messing with nothing but the best. Nothing but the best. Let's get back to it. They don't have big chest tattoos either. And two other kids. Man, no, I can't I'm get, just saying, I can't okay, I wanna, no, no, I mean, let's be honest, let's be honest. Why should an average woman Say she's settling for an average man. Maybe ain't that nothing wrong sense. with it. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, ain't you nothing, said so I should just settle. No, wrong. you said that. Listen, listen, you said so I should just settle for an average guy. And I'm like, you're an average woman. Why should you I mean, not get I would be I would be settling. I mean, he could I mean nothing. Why wrong why with would an why average. would why would okay, why would you be settling and he wouldn't so what would he be doing? Would he be upgrading? He don't got no money. I'm going to stop that right there. I want to show you men out there watching this program, and some of you women too, because I know you're going to give me some critique. I'm going to show you what the millionaires is messing with out here. If you don't look like what I'm going to show you, you delusional. Check this out. Now, if you ain't looking like that and you running around here like you a dime and you a five, six, or a seven, you delusional. You need to go find you a construction worker some damn well and stop playing out here. Because you literally have people out here <clears throat> who will accuse you of having toxic masculinity because you call this stuff out. You let people know, look, man. Do whatever. Just leave me out of it. I don't care about the brawl. Because guys like Kevin Samuels, guys like me who travel a lot and been places and seen women, I've seen what dimes look like. Y'all might see it on TV because you ain't never left your area. You might see the hot girl summer going on down in Florida. 
you know, sometimes y'all ladies might take a cruise with your boyfriend. You see it on the beaches when you take the cruise. But when you come back home, you average plain Jane again. And the women I just showed you on that video, those are the women that the top 10% of the men mess with. And those women get slutted out and sit back home with a baby in their stomach. Those women get passed around for millionaire to millionaire. I was gonna tell a story, but I'm, 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 I'm kinda, I'm, I'm gonna try to keep this, this short. But it's hilarious. It's real hilarious. And people be thinking there's something wrong with me. Nah, ain't nothing wrong with me. I done seen the light. I done seen it. I done seen what a top-notch woman look like standing on her head with her ass in the air for the enjoyment of millionaires. I done seen this stuff. And you five, sixes, and sevens you think you want that? You really don't. Let's get back into it, cause this, cause Kevin Savage said something to this lady, man. It was real, it was real funny, but she still didn't catch the message. No, so, if he don't have no money, you ain't find enough for no money. I'm not finding enough for no money. No. Mm -hmm. You're Average six. Women you're five. You're five. You said you're six, ma'am. You said you're six. You don't get money. You get second shift at the plant. Did you go to college? No, I didn't. Okay, ma'am. So I have my own business. Though. Congratulations. Don't care. Ma'am, you got two children. And you said you are six. I give you, okay, five, six. You, you, your numbers together would be average. So, mm -hmm. why, so an average man would be upgrading to get you? Look. I didn't say I'm that. Asking, I'm asking, ma'am, because I'm the man. We're just having a conversation. You said you'd be settling, so by by extension, he okay, would be. Okay, so I guess we'll be settling for each other. Y'all hear the delusion in this woman's voice? She really, in her mind, because of society, this, the feminist society. Okay, let me let me put it to you like this: ninety percent of the women chase after ten percent of the men. Inside that 90% of the women are eight, nines, and tens. I don't think no woman is ugly, okay? Ugly is like a three or a two. I don't think no woman is ugly, okay? I'm going to put it to you like that. But you got rankings in this shit. Like Mick said, you got levels of this. The eight, nines, and tens are what the millionaires is looking for. Out of the 90% of the women that chase the 10% of the men who make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, these men is not messing with nothing but the eight, nines, and tens. The five, sixes, and sevens is chasing these men too. They want these men too. But you don't you don't even make the grade. They're not even finna invite you to the mansion just so you can get slutted out. Think about what I just said. You're not even cute enough to go to the mansion and get slutted out by two or three millionaires. That should blow y'all mind. They ain't listening. They ain't getting it. Let's keep going and end this. Well, but, but he, no, but my, my, my issue is you said settling for him that means you'd be getting something less than what you deserve. When we settle, we get because less. I already have all, everything that I need. If if he's not adding to me, then that will be settling, right? Faven, I want you to understand what I asked you last night. I asked this question all the time with black women. If you have to work as hard today or harder if you want children with a husband, would you rather 
have a husband or be single. And almost 100% of the time, black women would say, if I have to work as hard as I am today with a husband, I'd rather be single because a husband is not just by being a man ain't enough. He's supposed to make her life easier. That is why I have no problem telling women to die alone. It is not our job to make women's lives easier. It's our job to protect, provide, but that's not necessarily easy. It's harder. Relationships are hard. So ma'am, you got all the things you need, except somebody to share life with. And the man who can meet your standards, okay? Can he meet other women's standards? Okay, then why should he not get the best? If he can meet your highest standard, he can meet another one, another woman's standard. And all I'm saying is that why should a man have to settle for a woman with two kids? Because you got a business? They don't have Kevin, they don't have to settle for me. But my, but you said you'd be settling for him. That's a clip where uh, where Kevin's told the woman, she said, well, what can I do? He said, be reincarnated. And that shit went right over her head. You can't change how you came out. You can't change that. Some women try to change it by getting BBLs and lip liposuction and stuff like that, but you can't change how you came out. That woman needs to go get her a construction worker and sit her ass down. There's another type of woman out there who are the older women who work all their life by themselves, shooing away men, accumulate all of this wealth, and now they think in their mind, I got all this wealth, I got all these degrees, I'm finna find me a man that can handle me, a man that's make more than me. Why would a man do that? If he makes more money than you, why would he settle for you? So he could be arguing all the time with you? You see, this is a message to the boss chicks out there. They go through life accumulating all these degrees, bossing yourself up to be like a boss man. Let me tell you what boss men do. They're tricks. Like Kevin Samuel said, a boss man can go to McDonald's and see a woman that looks like Kelly Rowland and wipe her up. Give her a hair salon. Buy her a Lamborghini and turn her into his wife. Some of you women out there who boss yourself up so high to where you stick your nose down in the average man, that's your husband. You wanted to be a boss act, and act like a boss man, then be a boss man then. Go to McDonald's, go to Costco and find a man that makes less than you. Buy him clothes. Buy him a car. Put him in your big house that you worked 20, 30 years for. Women don't want to do that. Understand what I'm saying to you people. Women that boss themselves up, they don't want to do that. But that's what boss men do. When you don't get to the level where you got business going on and this and that, this and that, you need to find your beta male, boss him up, put him in your house, and live your rest of your life with it. But it's a woman's nature to want to have a man over her. That's why it's hard for these women who work for 20 and 30 years to accumulate wealth it's hard for them to lay up with a man who makes less than them. But that's what you're going to have to do. Because the men that make more than you don't want you. You don't, you're 40 something years old. You don't work all your life to get all of this stuff so you can say, I did it by myself. I'm a woman and I did it by myself without no man. Now I need to find me a man. You in your 40s. The box is used. You got two or three kids. 
What the hell is a millionaire going to do with a boss chick? He don't want you. He might do business with you. He might say, okay, you, you, you got a truck company? I bet. I do business with you. He might even have sex with you. He ain't finna wife you. He finna go and get him a regular old woman that's pretty as hell who ain't got nothing and put her in his mansion. You know why? Because she is going to conform to what he want done. Not what you want done. You a boss chick. You finna get this man problems. I'm hoping I'm making some sense to some people out there. Before we get into this first break, like I told you before on one of my shows, that, you know, I do these commercial breaks, not because I'm getting paid on YouTube, but I'm on other platforms. So I like to have a break in there so I know where to go back and put commercials in. But we finna get we finna get into this first break. But before we do, there's one more clip I want to show you guys. A lot of the time I realize that other cultures kind of get this. I need you to hear me. Other cultures tend to get this. And when I say other cultures, I'm talking about white culture, Indian culture. I'm talking about other cultures other than African Americans. And a lot of the time what happens is you you're mistaking the playboy for a husband and you're trying to marry a playboy instead of marrying a husband and that's a lot of women don't realize this a lot of women don't realize this and this is why you continue to have such horrible dating experiences because you could be sit there, sitting there ignoring ignoring the husband material, ignoring the man that is already put you in his forever category. A man will sleep with you, hang out with you, Netflix and chill with you, and you are not his type at all, but he enjoys the sex, he enjoys your company, he enjoys the fun. And now as a woman, you've put this type of man into the husband material. They looked at the playboy and said, he just wasn't the one, he wasn't faithful, he wasn't ready to settle down. But Rebecca, as a matchmaker, I want you to find me Mr. the man who looks like Mr. Playboy, who wants to be loyal and faithful to me and committed to me and, and find, find me my husband, but I want him to look like Mr. Playboy and act like Mr. Playboy. And that's when I stopped matchmaking. We started getting death threats from people um some of them i believe were black women you know some people particularly black women didn't like the way didn't like her coaching style so she stopped serving you know stopped serving in that capacity as far as her show on the own network april mason who was recently on the dear future wifey podcast she is a femininity coach and she had an academy where she was helping black women, I believe individually, coaching them, and she stopped. She she didn't want to she she didn't want to do it anymore. Rebecca Lynn Pope, who you just saw a clip of, she is a content creator on YouTube. She's also a coach. She teaches courses, um, more so around, I would say she does more so life coaching. She doesn't outright say it's because of black women, but she implies this by talking about women and their unrealistic expectations and then also talking about other women and other cultures not having the same expectations that black women have right so these are three examples of coaches who have stopped helping black women relationship coaches are giving up on helping black women because of our unrealistic expectations. And again, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't have standards, but we need to be asking ourselves, can we bring you know, to the table what we're asking for and more? And you're blinded to all the red flags, all the red flags, right? That, that he's really not consistent. He's already showing you he's not into you, right? He's already, but then here's, here's the key guys. 
This is when I stopped matchmaking. I've told you guys this before. I stopped matchmaking because I, I had a different standard for men than I realized that a lot of women had. A lot of single women have these standards that are crazy. And I met my husband. And when I was matchmaking, I realized that the women, who, my female clients, would have not even given my husband a chance. They wouldn't have dated him. Okay, just like you, Kevin, you say that mm -hmm. high value men are supposed, to, men are supposed to have money, right? That's what you say. So if they don't have money, that means their value is low, right? No. And you go off women. No, 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 no. If you want to know, no. no. High value, okay, high value men, that's a completely different component. That's less than 10% of men. Mm -hmm. And high value men get high value women, women who are in high demand. Right. That's not your category. Because I got kids, right? You're not, ma'am, ma'am. No, yes, are you, would you say that you're a woman that's, uh, in high demand, or most wanted. I could be. I mean, yeah, I could be. I mean, you could be. I, so I okay. So so so. Listen, 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 listen. Don't hold on. Can I tell you about myself? Hold on, hold on, hold on, ma'am. You're 37 with two children. Where in the world do women who are average to above average look, average to cute? Who are a little overweight with two kids, where are these women in high demand? Kevin, I'm working on myself. So if no, ma'am, I asked a very specific question. It's not, no, because I, you're working on yourself. That's fine, but that doesn't mean you're in high demand. I can get there, can I? And see, so you mean to tell me if I don't, if I can lose 20 pounds? And 80 years ago, 80 years ago with a woman in your position, even without the children, 80 years ago with a woman in your position be with the with the top 10% man. You said 80, 80 years, years ago. 80 she, years ago. Would she be with a man in the top 10% of all men? 80 years ago. Yeah, because I don't have any kids. Yeah, so so no. There are only there are a limited amount of these men to go around. Ma'am, so this one I want you guys to understand, especially in the black community. You're an average woman by any stretch of the imagination. And I think that's being fair. Average at best is more likely to turn. Average at best would be pretty fair. Okay, why would, but why would, but listen. I'm the listening. Issue, but the issue is, so I got to settle for an average man. That's not settling. That's getting what you can afford to buy on the sexual marketplace. Okay, so if I wanted a high value man, what do I do? Be reincarnated. You can't get one. I'm gonna be honest, you can't. You're 37 with two kids. If they're less than 10% of the men, why would he pick you over a woman with no children? Like I said before, people, straight delusion this is what us average working men have to go through dealing with this stuff right here again the eight nines and tens are the ones that sit in the vip section with the ballers the five sixes and sevens they get all cute they go to the club together to pack shake their booty on the dance floor they in the lower section. They're not in the VIP section. The women in the VIP section, they go back to the after party at the mansion and get slutted out. By the time five o'clock in the morning roll around, those fine ass women you seen in the VIP section, they done had sex with about three or four different guys. And the five, sixes and sevens, they done went home, went to bed. Jumped up the next morning complaining to the average dude that liked them. They ain't doing enough. <laughs> it's crazy. This is some crazy stuff. I'm finna show you. I'm finna. We finna go to the first break. But before we do. I'm finna give you guys a taste. 
of what eight nines and tens look like. The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. Damn, I ain't gonna lie, she thick as hell. I'm about to try to talk to her. Excuse me, hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Good, good. I like this fit right here. Okay, I see you got the Louis on and all that. Yeah. What's your name? My name's Segura. What's your Sig name? I'm London. London. Nice oh, to okay. meet you. Nice to meet you. Where are you going? I was just taking a little walk and everything. You know, I live in the area, so okay. just taking a little walk. I stay up here in the area. Oh, for real? Yeah. Okay, okay. Let me get your number or something. Uh, no, nah, I don't think so. Um, why would you want my number for? I mean, you just said that you live over here. I live in the area. I'm new out here, so. That doesn't mean that I want your number. I mean, what's wrong with me having your number? I mean, it look like you don't have any money. I need somebody with money. What do you mean? I don't but have no money. What do you mean I'm by that? I'm pregnant. It looked like you don't You're have pregnant. any money. Yes. So I need somebody to take care I of me. I didn't even notice baby. that you was pregnant. Yeah, I am. I need somebody to take care of me and my baby, but it looked like the way you dress it like you don't have any money. What do you mean? I need these, a bag. What you mean? These are Mary's, a rule. What you mean? The way I'm dressed. Like, what you I'm just, supposed to walk around with a suit on? <laughs> you just not my type. You look like you don't have any money or nothing to offer. I mean, me but, why is we, but why is we talking about money off rip? We, I just say, hey, how you doing? You get what I'm saying? Because Let me get your number. Because I know number. what men want. Usually, you know, it starts from phone number, and then we go to the house. We see, we, you know. I oh, just so you're used to that. You need somebody with a bag. Yeah. Well, you don't even know me. Get to know me. I might have a bag. You know what I mean? So what's your number? Nah, I'm good. No, nah, I think I'm good. What you mean, though? I'm good. I need somebody with money. And just you, you don't meet my standards at all. I don't meet your standards. No. All right, well, cool. Have a nice day. And come over here. Damn, she thick as fuck, but she pregnant. I didn't know this was your car. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Come over here. So maybe now we can exchange numbers. What do you mean? I mean, I mean, you have a nice car. But you just told maybe me that. Can... No, 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 you just told me that you're pregnant, right? Yes, and I And that you need a nigga with a bag. So is that going to Hold on, hold on, let me say something, though. You was judging the book by its cover. Yeah. Why you just acting like that, though? Acting like what? Like that outside, though. Because I know what guys want, and at the end of the day, if you can't meet my standards, or I feel like we're not on the same level as far as money-wise, and I can't deal with you. I mean, but what level are you on? What do you mean by that? <laughs> a level meaning that if you don't meet my standards, having money, I'm on a good level right now. But I need someone to contribute to me and my baby. Contribute. Mm, interesting, yes. interesting. You make the cut though. Do you have kids? I do. I have six. 
Oh, you do? I'm Nigerian. So oh, okay. I, got, I got multiple wives and everything, too. Oh, really? You know what I'm saying? I hope that's not going to be an issue. Oh, no, if, it, if it is, you could just, you could step out if that's going to be an issue. Okay. I don't think it'll be an issue. No? Nah. How many kids you got? I have two. Two? This will be my third one. Okay, okay, for sure. You want more? No, nah, I think I'm done after this. You're done? Yeah. Okay, 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 for yeah. sure. I never dated a pregnant woman or really, like, really? with a pregnant woman. Yeah. Bag. What do you mean he was fronting like? What do you he mean act that? like he had money. He before was, he got you pregnant? Yes, before he had money, we met and he was acting like he had money and this and that, but it just didn't work out and he lied to me. So I kicked him to the curb. So I need somebody with a bag. Mm, interesting, interesting. Like what type of bag are we talking though? Like what you. I'm what talking you about having. I'm talking about having some assets, having a house, nice cars. I mean, I think that's a just bank a account. I mean, but what does that got to do with you, though? If you need, why do you need to do with a bag <laughs> if you got your own money, right? You said that you you're doing well, so what do you need to do with a bag? But for? you don't. Understand. You should be able to hold your own. Yeah. I, I'm saying to start taking you out and shit. You are you able? Well, obviously you're able, but are you come? You cool with like you know what I'm saying? I'm still going wanna. I got needs too. Okay. See exactly. I knew you was gonna say that even before. No, 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 no. You know what type of needs? You feel me? I'm nasty for real. <laughs> okay. Is you nasty? <laughs> I can be. Depends on the day and what we're doing. <laughs> oh, really? Well, what are we doing right now? <laughs> okay, let's go get something to eat and we'll figure it out and we'll talk about it. Okay, okay, okay. What type of restaurants should we be going to? Um, I only like the expensive restaurants like Steak 48, True Lux, anything with steak in it. Okay, unfortunately, I'm allergic to steak. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. well, so, what do you like? I'm what vegan. Kind of food? Vegan? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I'm um, vegan. I'm pretty sure I can Google some vegan places in the area and we can go up there. For sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie though. That pregnant cat be crazy. Really? What? Y'all be Why is hella it crazy? wet. That be hella wet when you're Oh, pregnant. yeah, we do. Yeah, we, you know what I mean? yeah, we do. Yeah. Hella wet. Yeah, wet, wet. <laughs> that's, what you, that's what you're saying you got? Yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, maybe we can. <laughs> Maybe we can have some fun after we go eat. For me, he gotta be a dub. Yeah. Like, it's over with. Yeah, it, it actually it is over with. No, we no, no, but you said you still kind of like contacting this shit. Yeah, every once in a while, but... Yeah, but no, 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 that gotta be done. It has to be done? Done. Okay. Matter of fact... Maybe we can work something out. No, no, no. Before we even get any further, that gotta be done. It have to be done. How about you call him? Okay. Put it on speaker, too. No, I'm serious, I'm though. I'm gonna call him. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Hello. I just met this uh, dude. I think that oh, me and you are done. I don't really want to like, deal with you. you I don't want to deal with you. I don't want to deal with you anymore. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You don't. It, it doesn't matter. I'm done. We're cutting everything off. You're you're blocked for now. You are done. You you don't do nothing for me and the baby in my stomach or nothing. You don't do anything for us at all. You don't do nothing. You don't worry about where I'm at. I'm turning my phone off. We're done. She was for okay. real. Yeah, I'm for real. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm done. You wanted me to, cause I'm really feeling you. So if you, whatever you say from now on, since I really, really like you, and I. I mean, really, you don't know me. How you like me? I could just get a feel. Oh, you like my energy, my vibe? Yeah, for yeah. Sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Do you okay. like my energy and my vibe? I mean, you cool, you cool, you cool. You know what I mean? But I'm, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tell you something though. I'm gonna be honest. What? This ain't my car. Really? Mm -hmm. Then why are you in inside of it? Why would you have a key to a car that's not yours? I mean, honestly, if I'm being honest, I'm waiting for my uncle to come out this building right here. I do live in the area, but he lives in this building right here. Really? So this is not my car. So what are we doing? Are we gonna take the car to go eat? I mean, he's about to come down soon, actually. So are you, are you on your feet? You're walking? I mean, I don't have a car right now. You know, like I said, I just moved here from Nigeria. I got six, I got six children that I take care of a lot. You know what I mean? I've been going through some hard times. I'm trying to get off my feet. I'm staying with my uncle right now. You know, shit like that. So you just made me call my baby daddy and made me fuck up whatever I got going on with him. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. You know what I'm saying? But why didn't you tell me that before I called him? I mean, honestly, because I was just testing to see if he was a fucking gold digger. Oh shit! Okay. Obviously, I see that you a fucking gold digger. Okay, and it's okay. crazy. You know what? This is my car. I was just testing you to see if you a gold digger, and okay. it's a shame 
that you pregnant and that you will leave your baby. Welcome back to the Daily Read and I am your host Marcus Gentry. I enjoy watching those uh those those pranks. This was like one of the most tragic ones I've seen. Like I said in the in the in the beginning of this this show today. This show is dedicated to the legacy of Kevin Samuels, but it's also we're also talking about America's whore problem. Listen what I just said. America has a whore problem. Or you can say ho. America has a whole problem. Whatever you want to, however you want to say it, you want to pronounce it the right way, whore, or you want to say it the ghetto way, ho. America has a mental health issue floating through the females in this country. When you got 90% of the population of women in this country jockeying and fighting over 10% of the males because the top 10% make hundreds of thousands of dollars or more and they dismissing everybody else calling them dusty they got all kinds of names dusty brokey uh uh they even start calling dudes gay uh uh weak men beta male since when are you considered an alpha male because you got money some people don't know what an alpha male is some people don't know that there's three types of alphas I'm a sigma you got the alpha male which usually has a pack around him a pack of men a pack of women you got the zeta alphas the zetas are what scar was in the uh, uh, the Lion King you had you had the Lion King's daddy he was an alpha of the pack and then you had scar who was a zeta zeta males are alphas too but they dangerous alphas. Then you got the sigma males. The sigma males can lead if they want to. They don't want to be bothered. The best example I can give you, going back to the Lion King, of what a sigma male is, is the monkey that was off in the woods by himself. And everybody came to the monkey and told the monkey about the new baby boy being born and stuff like that he was what you consider a sigma male off by himself don't really care about what's going on and people come to him sometime for advice and help and stuff like that that don't mean he can't lead the pack he just don't want to be bothered with that so you got three type of alphas out here a lot of people don't realize that so you got all kinds of names for people who don't have the money that some of these people got but you can be an alpha without having no money I've seen it we finna get into the legacy you see the first part of this show was dedicated to Kevin Samuels now we finna get into the people that came after him his legacy uh, Melanie King and uh, the other woman is uh, Kendra G it's a, it's a lot of more people out there, you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a lot of more people out there, but these two women are fascinating. I, I like both of their shows. And and guys have found out that's kind of not the case anymore. And more men are finding out, hey, you know what? No matter what I do, it seems I'm being blamed as a bad guy. I'm just going to start isolating and pulling out of society. And what happens? Women are angry that they're doing that. You're, you know, I, I was originally going to call this video Damned If You Do, Damned if you don't, but I think this is actually more accurate. And women are paying the price now, and they're going to keep paying the price. And by the time they actually come around, we're going to have a generation or two of very unhealthy, unhappy, lonely women. And the guys are going to be okay. The guys, because men, men are always okay. I mean, not always, but what I mean is that once a man understands kind of his role and what he's going to be doing and what he's got to do, and that he doesn't have a lot of social connections, men can kind of wire themselves to to realign like that. I'm not getting into the semantics of that, but one of the things she said right away when she talked about how she's been told that on dates, like tone it back, dial back 
this lawyer talk. Like you don't need to grill me. You don't, you can take off that hat. And this is what I think we as women are not understanding is that what is, especially if you've been in a career or you've always had to get it out the mud or you have a certain mindset, it is very hard to turn that off. When women talk about having it all, and this is black and white, okay? I'm not making this a black or white issue right now. It's hard to turn it off and go into a feminine role place. And so it's to then turn around and be soft and to exude the, the, the qualities that men are looking for in a woman, in a, in a wife, it is very difficult to do that. And I think it's difficult for us as women, especially as we move up in our career, to then take a role, a more feminine role, which a feminine role is a more submissive role. Doesn't mean it's less power. It doesn't mean you're less equal in terms of who you are, your accomplishments, or as a person. But someone has to take the lead in a relationship. And so what happens is we're so used to having to try to, you know, we're, we're competing in the workplace and taking on a more masculine frame there and, and we're rewarded for it. We're incentivized to continue that. And so then to turn around and you get into a relationship, you, you, you say, well, I need a man who can handle me who can handle all of this dominance, who can handle the way I am, who can put me in my place, who can check me. You'll, you'll hear this language, but men aren't wanting to do that, especially the men that most women who are successful are going to want. So you're going to mostly want a man who is just as successful, if not more, usually more and much more. There's multiple videos on this. I've even done videos on this when women feel like they have to date down. So then you won't respect a man or his masculinity if he's not higher up in you in terms of income or position in what he's doing. And that if he doesn't have a very dominant personality to put you in your place while still letting you do you, live your truth and do whatever you want, it is seen as though there's, you don't really have options. And so I think hopefully that makes sense. And, and I think this is a good discussion, what she's saying, we're not able to rest. We're not able to even see another side of the coin. And it's almost offensive. It is not almost, it is offensive to even use the word submissive or taking the feminine role, which the feminine is a more submissive role. It is a powerful Women are powerful. Femininity is powerful, but we've been brainwashed and programmed into believing that if we aren't just like men and take on masculine positions and masculine attitudes, or, you know, if, if we don't, if we aren't just like men, somehow it diminishes our power as women. It diminishes us. And so we don't want femininity because femininity is seen as weak, getting, you know, run over as being, you know, used or abused. That's what we equate it as. We, we, we take, and, and instead of, we don't understand these things because we've never been taught. Most of us, it's never been modeled. So we're going with what we think works in a masculine frame, but we're finding out, especially as we age and you keep going up in your career, it does not serve you anymore. It does not serve you. And I'm hearing somewhat from Ebony here that she's saying the things that have gotten her through to this point no longer serve her. They may serve her career, but they are certainly not serving her when it comes to having the family and relationship life that she wants. But let's continue how you would aggressive, frame feminine aggressiveness. traits. Aggressive. Uh, okay. Grace, aggressive. yeah, aggressive, not assertive. It's okay for a woman to be assertive. Uh, grace, mm. first of all, I think we've lost our grace. We, we move in such a harsh and hard way. Grace, compassion, um, nurturing, nourishing, mm. um, elegance. How about majesty? How about divinity how about holiness this is not a language you hear coming out of most women's mouths but they'll talk about being a boss being a diva being you know in charge and some of us are either not seated in our throne as queens or we're in the throne and the crown is crooked meaning we're in the throne and we don't really know how to hold that place without the masculine aggressiveness and demanding and attachment and it's not, it's killing us it really is that I'll just speak for myself vulnerably. Uh, when I think of a masculine um, posture and what I would expect a man to do in my life, uh, two things come top of mind and they are provide 
and they are protect. And when my lived experience, um, and I, I think I'm still relatively young, I guess, but I'm 40 in, in, in September. So, you know, I've, I've, I've had some, some relationships. And I've yet to find a man who has shown up, and this includes even my father who was absent. I've yet to have a male energy that provided or protected me consistently ever. Mm -hmm. So I think that mm -hmm. I have taken on the reins to protect and provide for myself. Because what I'm not going to do, Ayanla, is be without. Baby, it's not happening. Be without what? So that be would without what? be without protection, mm -hmm. be without protection, oh. and be okay. without the necessities of life. Okay. So, so, okay. but, but, but I say that with an invitation, Ayanla, check me, show me the era of my ways. <laughs> Tell me how I might be missing it because I might be. Okay. I too am an alpha woman. So I understand what that means. And I tell people all the time, I was a horrible mother. I was a horrible mother. I was a great father. <laughs> And I was a horrible mother mm. because I had never been mothered. So I didn't know how to affirm, mm -hmm. how to nurture, how to nourish, how to um, guide. I knew how to direct, how to demand, how to discipline, and like you said, provide mm -hmm. and protect. Those are masculine energies. And the, the distinction here is men build, women create. So we know how to build. We know how to get to the external and get the work done and drive and push and do it, do it, do it. We don't know how to be still. General, they, they, they don't want to hear. They think their way is right. And they're, I'm crazy when I say sit down, shut up and listen, and you can create what you want. They don't want to hear that. Y'all, she's talking to her, but this is so powerful. You know, this is why the older women who are wise and have learned, they are to teach younger women. That was Melanie King, people. A beautiful sister. She has a great show. I think some of you guys need to catch her on YouTube. I think she gives uh, coaching as well. I know Kendra G, Kendra G does. But I don't know about Melanie King, but I know she's a YouTube influencer and she has a pretty good show. She don't mind calling the bullshit out. She'll call it out. If she see uh, these females out here with this feminist agenda, out here hoeing, acting crazy, like they better than the average man, she don't play. Now let's get to Kendra. Just, I, I wanted to do this one out of all the kids' shows that I've seen, because this woman right here was spooky. I think this woman right here shook Kendra up a little bit. Let's get into it. Hi, Kendra. Oh my God. I can't ah. see your face though. I'm so sorry, Kendra. You Thank gotta get us light. Sit right there real quick before we go further. This woman is 51 years old. And you can tell by her demeanor and what she says before Kendra cuts her off and takes her off of her show. Number one, the woman's weird. But you can tell she's been around a lot of money. And now she done reached that peak. Remember what I said earlier about these 40 and 50 and 60 year old women who look good. They spent their whole career dismissing men, building up homes, businesses, and now they're trying to find and settle down with somebody that has more than them. It's not going to work, people. It's not going to work. And I'm not going to say all the time, but some of you women out here call yourself boss chicks. You're going to have to find you a steadman, period. You're gonna to have to start looking down at the same people that you smeared, that you, you know, you shooed along when they was trying to talk to you on your way up to the top. You're gonna to have to go back and find one of these men or die alone, like Kevin Samuel said, hell, to die alone. Give you money that you built to your kids because high value men don't want you. High value men want somebody that's gonna get on their program not have arguments with you whenever you feel like it because you a boss chick 
they're not going to deal with that. Not with you, not with any other woman. They don't have to. And then more than likely, some of you boss chicks got two or three kids already. Because just because you were shooing away men, don't mean you haven't been fucking. So some of you boss chicks got kids already. What a high value man want with you? You got a lot of money. You a millionaire. Okay, you don't boss yourself up. You need to go to Costco and find you a guy that's maybe five, ten years younger than you. Blow his back out, or he blow your blow blow your back out. Buy him a couple of suits. If he's a mechanic, buy him a mechanic shop and say, "Baby, it's in both of our names, but this yours." You know that way you want to emasculate him. Buy him a mechanic shop if he's a mechanic and live your life but these boss chicks don't want to do that they swear it down they want to find people equal or above them it's not going to happen they're not going to deal with you and that's exactly what I said earlier that's exactly what's going on with this creepy ass woman right here and Kendra spotted it immediately like this woman is spooky let's get back into it Okay, can you turn around and look at the light, please? How old are you? 51. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi. Clean your nose. What is that? my nose. Someone told me to clean my nose. But I broke two nails. Um, there ain't nothing wrong with my nose. Oh, I got a pimple right here. <laughs> okay. Better? That's better? a pimple. Sorry. Say what? Um, No, it ain't better. The light next to you, turn around. The light gotta be in your face. It's like a shadow, boo. Okay, that's better. That's better. Hi. Okay, <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's try. I won't get frustrated with you. I know you've been trying to go on the show. I'm what's sorry. Your, what's your name, baby? Shani Richardi. What's your name? Shani. Shani? Yes, yeah, Shani. Shani, let me ask you a question, boo. Are you yeah. able to move from this one position in your house? Um, I have like a broken ankle right now and it's kind of hard to really get around. Okay. Sorry. Can you just turn? Okay. So can you turn over and face the light that there's a light next to Right there because I want to say something about this lady. Kendra done had some weird people on her show, some weird women. But this woman right here gave off vibes of a transvestite, maybe. That's why she asked her how many kids she had. The woman said she had two kids. But like I said, it was a creepy vibe this woman gave off. And Kendra spotted it. And it's kind of funny toward the end. You know, when, when y'all see the end, it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow your mind how delusional some of these women are. Fell apart. Okay. I, so I don't... Is... Say again? I don't really know what happened. It just fell apart, like, after a while. I just don't know. I was getting really bad energy from him. So I decided just to, you know, we just decided to go out in separate ways. But we are still legally married. We're separated. It's been about you're, seven. So you're married right now? Yes, I'm still legally married. We're not together. Okay, I, when, are, when are you going to be officially divorced? Uh, we're working on it. Everybody's so if fine. you're married, so if you're married, why are you on my show? Because I need um to meet somebody, you know. But you're I'm married. Somebody. You don't want to well, get your, when are you going to get your, like, I mean, this happens a lot. I get people who are separated but married on the show. Y'all know it's for single people. So you got to at least, if you're going to be separated, you just say, you don't know, when you going to get a divorce. Child, um, what kind of man supposed to jump into that? You'd be surprised. Um, uh, you know, it's like, we don't live together. So it's really complicated right now, Kendra. So you just filed for divorce two weeks ago? Yes. Officially, yes. You know, we're going to proceed, but you're a red flag to me. I, I really think, I mean, it's, I'm going to be honest. Like, I get people that are separated. Usually they're separated for a year. They could give me, I've been separated. The divorce going to be finalized in a, in a week or two. But you're, I appreciate you being honest. But you just filed for divorce. And you're admitting this is going to be a while. So you probably are going to be a legally married man. I mean, excuse me, woman for another year and a half, probably, huh? At least. Um, probably so. I mean, I hate to say it, but yeah, that's just how it is. I mean, it's nothing I could do. I've tried and um, he just won't. 
he's not going to give in. He told me he's never going to leave me alone. And okay, so you got a crazy. Okay, so get this. So now you're you're giving us the you're giving us the honest truth. You said you had to block your husband today because he wants to get back with you. Yes. You just he said you 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 just said he's never going to leave you alone, and you want a new man to sign up for this. Um, I mean, I want to seem like that. I mean, he can't come to my house because he's about just going through the divorce process and then meeting someone. Why do you want to meet someone during this stage of your life when you are married to somebody else and you just filed for a divorce two weeks ago? Like, what? why now and why not wait until everything is finalized? Because, I mean, that could be years. I'm more in my 50s. I'm not getting any younger. I mean, I'm not going to I'm almost 60 years old. I mean, you know, I, I still have some years left. I mean, I don't think I look all that bad. If I wait years... You know, I may not even be around in years. Tomorrow is not promised to anybody. I would love to meet somebody and be in a relationship. And I know I'm a good person, and one day God will bless me with someone. I go places. You know, I meet people a lot. I go to gas stations, supermarket. There's always somebody coming up to me. and But it's just I haven't been feeling anybody. Y'all like be using that. God's name in any way y'all want to use it. So you a married woman. You asking God to bless you with a boyfriend? Alone. I don't know. Somebody wants to sign up for that, whatever, but I don't know. What kind of man are you looking for, Jennifer? I'm Shani. I'm sorry, Shani. <laughs> yes, this is Shani yes. of State New York, 51, financial advisor, two grown yes. children, 18 to 31, um, yes. has been married three times, still currently married. And what kind of man are you looking for? Um, Just a nice man, a uh, nice guy that has good uh someone who has at least a million dollars in net worth say what what you say in dollars in net worth wait say it say it one more time he has to have one million dollars in net worth, or i'm not even gonna date him okay and that's the way i'm coming from and why i feel that way because i know a man that worked at mcdonald's for 30 years and he has a million dollars why a man with a million dollars going to date you? You a wife, married to somebody, you come in with drama. Why the hell if I got a million dollars, I'm going to date you? Why? I'm, not, um, I'm very successful. I'm a financial advisor. You come with a crazy husband. You just told us your husband is harassing you. Who would a man with a million dollars going to sign up for that drama? Your husband calling you at night, finding you, pulling up to his job, telling you that you with his wife. Why would a man with a million dollars going to sign up for that bullshit? Are you serious? You know what, um, Kendra, I'm a financial advisor. Uh, I've been around wealthy people, mostly- Then why ain't you with them? Why ain't you with them? If you've been around the wealthy people, worth a million dollars, then why didn't you settle down with one of them while you married? Um, I've been on some dates. Dates? We all been on dates. You're talking about you want to get married to somebody and be settled down with them right now. Um, you don't understand I, how this sounds crazy? <laughs> okay, so, and you said he has to be worth a million dollars. Yes, in order to date me, yes, he does own his home because I own homes. It's not that hard, all right. I bought Harlem when Harlem in the early '90s, Kendra, when no one cared about Harlem, New York. I bought properties in Harlem and I flipped them for over a million dollars, okay, in 2014. So there's no reason, you know, for for anybody to not have any money. I know a guy that made a, a career out of. Oh, there's plenty of men that got money. That's not we we ain't talking about okay. that. They just they're, are they gonna want to date you? Oh That's yeah, just the question. I don't have a problem. Like I said before, um, I go places. I'm always mostly in a car, so I'm not walking around. And if I was, I'm sure somebody would hit me up. I go to Costco's. I go to regular places. Um, I meet people all the time, but it's just you okay. Know. Let's keep going. So, when was the last time you was intimate with someone? Um, truth, like. Um, we can't hear you. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So why are, is that guy an option? No, because he's married. So I can't. So why, so why is that a problem with you? you you're married. Um, so let me get this straight. I, okay, 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 I, okay, I, okay. I, we, 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 we got, we ain't even got enough flags to throw at you no more, girl. We ain't got enough flags. So you married. 
to somebody yeah. else. You got a crazy husband who don't want to let you go. The man yeah. gotta be worth a million dollars. Uh, and you're not gonna have sex with him all the time because you don't like having sex. And no. you a woman that sleeps with other married men. Well, that was Jennifer, one of the well, no, your name ain't Jennifer. Channy, Jennifer, Melissa, Keisha. I don't give a damn what your name is. Get your ass off my show. I can't. I can't do it no more. I'm sorry. I tried. I really did try. I'll Channy, Jalisa, Rebecca. I don't give a damn what her name is. Get your ass off my show. I don't got time for it. I don't got time for it. Go. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, Kendra G ain't playing. I like Kendra. She call it out too. If these women call her show with some bull, she gonna call it out. She ain't gonna play no games with it. My man's kind of blurry. But the moral behind this is I'm trying to show you that because this is gonna play until the end of my show. When I start talking about brothers and going across seas finding wives. Men are checking out. They letting the feminists have America. They going outside America. And see, a lot of people thinking in their mind that these men are going to other countries finding wives and bringing them back here. Nah, they're not doing that. They don't want their wives to, to be influenced by this American bullshit system. This feminist culture. Them women over there are bred to be wives. Period. God first, man, one man, children. In America, everybody got God. Then these men, these beta males, claiming that they alphas, who marry these women, are trying to put women between them and God on a pedestal is God, man, woman, and children. That's how it's always been. That's how it is. And for people in this country, which a lot of people are starting to call America the new Babylon, for people in this country to go against that is crazy. And then on top of that, you have a society, every society mostly protects women. So you got these delusional, crazy women running around America, and then when they act up and they run across the wrong person, they're going to get their face smacked off. Because you got guys out here like me, I, a woman told me on the phone, I, it sounded like she was testing me. She called me on the phone and me and her was talking. We was communicating. You know, she was a young girl. She was close to 30. And I'm at that age where I can date up or down. Some of us men hit that sweet spot where we can date 50-something year olds or we can date early 30s, late 20 year olds. That's what you call a sweet spot for us men. So this particular woman was like, I'm, I'm, this is my story time. She was uh, 29, 28 years old, and me and her talking on the phone, and the, the conversation started steering towards, I can't stand this guy, who, who I spit in his face. It was almost like she was warning me that this was her routine. This is what she does. She gets crazy sometimes and like to spit on people. I told her on the phone, Man, I wish somebody would spit on me. I'm going to smack her in her face. I let her know straight up. I ain't one of them dudes. You spit on me, I'm going to smack you in your face and me and you both going to court. Matter of fact, I might not even smack you in your face. I might take my belt off and whack you across your legs three or four times. That way, by the time the police get there and arrest both of us, we get to court. They're going to laugh you. They're gonna laugh at you in court. When I start telling them how I whooped your ass with that belt, I didn't beat you up. I didn't stomp you in the ground, but I'm going to whoop your ass if you spit on me. And I could tell she kind of got offended. Like I'm a womanizer, like I beat women. 
It was crazy. Needless to say that 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 it wasn't nothing happening. When I when I, it was like the bad vibes. When you feel them bad vibes, you gonna end that. Let's continue on because, like I said, Kevin, uh, Kevin Samuels left a legacy, man, of truth tellers. And this next female, she's a young girl. You can tell she's probably in her uh, Reba. She's probably in her mid twenties, but she's a young girl. But she she gets it. Listen to her. So this woman made a post. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and read the post to you, but let me just give you a little clarification. This woman, uh, said a whole bunch of stuff that the women in the comments were livid over. Once I start reading this, you're going to understand why. Okay. Um, this woman said, females are no prize. Be realistic. Half us ran through at a young age. Half y'all want a man to pay all of your bills and expenses, hair, nails, outside food, etc. Half of y'all are messy as F to the point you can't see the floor in your bedroom, can't clean at all, dishes be in the sink for days, even weeks. Half of you guys are abusive as hell and think it's so cute. Half y'all hop in a new relationship or situationships quick as hell and be insecure the entire time about the relationship and start acting controlling. Half y'all don't feel anything but lust for your man. Half y'all will cut off a man for taking advice from his own mama. Half y'all don't know uh, what the F you need and want and don't trust them the entire time because of your own insecurities and you treat a man like he's the one that played you in the past when he could in fact change your life and be a blessing. Half y'all don't let them have their own peace, sleep for hours, drink a little, be on the game for hours after work, go out with his friends. Don't even let a man hold the door for a lady without getting mad, calling him friendly. Go out and ask these men out, pay for their gas, pay for their meal, open the door for them once in a while. Be the driver instead of the passenger sometimes. Give him random gifts. Y'all get rejected by a man once and start calling them names. Um, thought, taught these men that no means no. Can't be mad that they're learning to, uh, that they're starting to learn their worth. Okay. She just, uh, took, she just was like, I'm going to give it to you. No chaser. I'm going to give it to you straight. I don't care who's mad, who feels like this, but she summed up a lot of women in this generation. And you that was Reba, Reba TV. Some of you guys check her out. I like her show too. Uh, she has an interesting uh, view and take on things, but she gets it too. She gets it too. She understands. I'm about to go into uh, another a break here. And when we get back off this break, now we're going to talk about the brothers that's going overseas and how the Asian women clap back at the uh, black American women for talking shit. We'll be back. Do you have any children? Uh -huh. Five. Five kids. How old are your kids? 24, 18, 19, 8, and 6. Y'all about the same man? Yes. Why did y'all get married and have five kids together? At the time, I just didn't feel like he was ready and I didn't want to be obligated. The they're a single mom because their family? opinion is more important than being with the person that they had kids with. That's his fault. It's not her fault. No, if you're a woman and you want to keep the man that you had a baby with, you have to bow down. You have to bow down. You are not in charge here. What are you talking about? The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. The Speaking to the amount of black men that are currently in Cartagena, but it is very rare for me to see a large number of black men 
on a flight that I'm on. It is very, 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 very rare. So to arrive and have a flight full of men, uh, but also to see other flights full of men and the customs line was crazy long. So when I say that, um, there were black men everywhere. I literally mean there were black men everywhere. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, it's just dusties, it's just broke men, it's just men that other women wouldn't date. I saw lots of very attractive men. I saw lots of men who looked like they had means. They, you know, they looked like they had their stuff together. They were they were dressed well, they had good luggage. Like th these were not men that you're just like, oh girl, nobody wants them. What was the most shocking to me as as I was waiting for my Uber, there were women in club dresses picking up men, and the time was very much like, oh, you've been here before, but it's your homeboy's first time, and he and she brought somebody for him. All the black men that I saw at the airport, I ain't seen none of them in the streets. The men go, this is too much! We're going overseas! We're going overseas! You know what, sir? Good luck finding a woman overseas who's gonna come back to this country and work to help pay your one bedroom rent. That doesn't even make sense. And now y'all are mad, talking about, oh, we're gonna get our passport. Go ahead, clap, clap. You didn't make the roster anyway. Okay, what's your problem then? Every passport, bro, I know in the real world is an American bottom feeder in our dating pool, okay? Oh, nah, that is so disrespectful and condescending. All right, I gotta take some time to address this here. These people are so mad, it's unbelievable. And if you thought the bashing of passport bros was slowing down, newsflash it is not. The movement itself is getting bigger and broader every day, and so there's a lot more new people talking about it. But then, the conversation is getting more nuanced, more creative, but a lot more weird. So what they're going to do is find a woman, many of whom are very young. Because in many of these countries they're going to, the legal age of consent is much younger than the United States. If you don't see why that's disturbing, get some help. I looked into the legal minimum age of marriage in popular destinations for passport bros. Here is a comparison with the United States where it is 18. As you can see, it is not much different either. They're going after these women who are very young, very vulnerable, very naive, usually in poor families, and they're essentially buying these women from their families, which I'm sorry, is human trafficking. I think some Western women are failing to accept the fact that in many foreign countries, women can look younger even into their 30s. Just look at this. I'm assuming that she is over 18, but she looks 15. And that's the issue that we have with these passport bros. We're not jealous. Comes off as creepy and exploitative. I'm 40. I actually thought my wife was 33. To tell you the truth, when I'm I wrote- I'm 32. I thought she was 33 when I wrote down the questions. Apparently she's 32. Which I'm assuming that she is over 18, but she looks 15. Well, I don't know why you think we're underage, but we can exactly help the fact that we look a lot younger than you think we should. You lose. We're going to another country to buy a wife out of poverty and bring her back here to essentially be your housekeeper and sex slave. It's human trafficking. You can throw a marriage certificate on it to make it look more wholesome, but it's human trafficking. That's what it is. In many cases where these girls are underage, it's pedophilia. You have to give these foreign countries some credit. These foreign women are just as educated as you if not more. Instead of all these wild accusations, maybe consider that this may be the reason why so many Western men are marrying abroad. People are people regardless of where they're at. However, Asian women in general and Filipino women who are also Asian have a tendency to be more loyal to their partners than uh, westernized women. And that doesn't mean that there's no loyal western women either, it's just I found that there's a higher percentage of Asian women that are more loyal than the percentage of western women. Let's think about it this way. All I said was that you have to be a better human and that if you have to get a passport essentially to go get coochie, then that says something about you. Why? Because there's millions of people here in America, including people that travel overseas. So if you can't get a girl here, then good luck getting a girl anywhere else. Now that you've said that, let me actually blow your mind. Do you know how many women are outside North America? 3.7 billion. So yes, an American passport bro has way more options outside North America than you could ever imagine. And you also want to know why? Because in other countries, men are held at a 
different standard. They are providers. They do pay for a lot of the shit. They are the main breadwinner and they do take care of shit. Unlike a lot of you men nowadays, huh? Hmm. And what? Y'all don't like America because we have free will here? Or is it because women have more rights and we're able to provide for ourselves and now that we're realizing that we don't need you, it's showing. And now y'all are mad. Talking about, oh, we're gonna get our passport. Go ahead. Clap, clap. You didn't make the roster anyway. Don't hate from outside of the club that you couldn't even get in. So basically, you don't need these men. You don't even like them. But you still don't want them to go somewhere else to find happiness. Huh. You are not a good person. Certain women will say, I don't want you, but they'll try to keep you hanging on this little string. And it's not that they don't want you, they just want to see if they can do better than you. And if they, when they realize they can't, then they're going to reel you back in. So it's, I don't want you, but I don't want you with anybody else because I might want you later. So in that meantime, they're treating men like shit. And the men are waking up and we're seeing this and we're saying, fuck that crap. We're go, we'll go to someone that actually wants to acknowledge my worth right off the bat. It's just accountability. That's all it is. We have failed these men. And for some reason, they feel like they have to not only go outside of the United States, but they don't want an African woman, a Haitian woman. They go straight to the Asian country. Oh, my dear. I've seen a lot of passport bros go to Africa to find their wives. Some even go to the Caribbean specifically for black women. So that your point is a blatant lie. You guys know how to treat these men far better than we do. We have failed by demanding the bare minimum, respect, protection, things along those lines. Commitment, fidelity. We have really messed up by expecting men to be able to rise to that standard. And that's on us. And you know, they love to tell us that we're going to be lonely, we're going to be cat ladies when we get older, but that is a burden that we have to bear for our mistake. We loved them whenever they didn't love us, they ran all over us, they blamed us, and then here we are. And not all women have been in the right. There are some of us who have also hurt men, but for the majority of us, we, we just missed the mark. We fell short. We don't know how to be submissive and quiet like you. Please teach us because we, we, we are obviously doing something wrong and these men are running from us. That was so damn sarcastic. I love it. At least you are not shouting angrily. So in their mind, it's all mythical and it has these magic women who uh, don't need to be treated like humans and would gladly marry them and cook and clean for them and whatever. To bring back a mythical unicorn Stepford housewife. Let's forget this passport bros for a minute. The kind of language that some of these Western women are using to describe foreign women is borderline offensive. Like the superiority complex is completely insane. Anyways, let's get back on course. Go to Asian and you can get a woman for $20 and a bag of rice. Words from one of the men you're defending. We know American men, you don't. This person hit their head on a rock? Like this is actually giving me a headache. Like let's go to Asian? Where's Asian? If there's one thing these passport bros have done really well, it is their epic display of their love stories abroad on social media. Pranked my baby love. Shine bright like a diamond. Took her to Walmart for wedding rings. Shine bright like a diamond. Then we went to the premier shop in Honolulu. My life in the beautiful sea. I just Confused so and grouchy. You and I, you and I. Oh, like this is for real. In the sky. So sweet. This kind of content probably explains why so many Western women are triggered. <laughs> but hold on, there's even more. Hold on a minute, the drama surrounding the passport bros is about to get way more interesting. Listen to Western women go deeper into what they claim to be the true agenda of the passport bros. 
and watch the real passport bros and their furry women respond to each one of them. It's about to get very tasty. Let's go. Like, y'all really just don't get it. Every passport bro I know in the real world is an American bottom feeder in our dating pool, okay? He complains about gold diggers while he has no gold. He wants to escape the dating expectations of American women, but then complains about the marriage expectations of traditional foreign women. Look, when you say that you're a passport bro, I'm just keeping it real. When you say that you are publicly admitting that you don't have the personality, social skills, or the confidence to get a lady in your country. A bullshit? Or maybe, hear me out, they are trying to escape this kind of dating scene for some peace of mind. But just to be clear, this is the kind of dating scene that they are running away from. One third of women in a new survey admitted to going out on a date just for a free meal. They were hungry, no romantic interest. They could care, couldn't care less. They just want a free meal. If you take me to McDonald's, that'll be the last date we go on. And if I'm like, yo, be ready at six, I'm gonna pick you up, and then we, take you know, McDonald's. Don't ever talk to me again. You get in blocks. How much do you expect the guy to spend on the first date? At least five hundred dollars. You gotta pay to get my hair done, my nails done, my feet done. So let me ask you this: If he pays for all that, right, and the date doesn't go good, are you gonna refund him? Hell no! I gotta spend how I look and I look good, so you gotta spend a good bag. How much is that though? Um, as much as I want him to. You know what's even better? Let's allow a passport bro to address this issue. Truth is, dating in America is probably the worst place in the world to date as an American man. Some women in the West are taught men ain't shit and masculinity is toxic. At the same age as some women in other countries are taught the little things you can do to help a man feel heard and respected. Like how boys are taught to open doors or give flowers to women. People need the passport bros to be losers or predators. Because then they don't have to wonder why intelligent, successful, genuine men are leaving and having the time of their lives. I thought the masculine role of providing and protecting was universal and that as men we naturally and instinctively grow up with these roles in mind. But apparently the western women disagree. They claim that these passport bros are not traditional men and so they are in for a very big surprise in these foreign countries. Okay, we seriously need to talk about the passport bros movement. And first of all, these men are hypocrites because for all their talk about the importance of traditional values, they certainly don't have any themselves. Culturally speaking, you lack the ability to be the strong alpha male leader that you want to be treated as such. But is that really true though? Let's listen to a Filipina address this issue. He makes me feel safe and comfortable. He makes me feel loved and secure. He helped me grow and molded me into a woman that I am right now. With so much more confidence in myself. He taught me things that I did not know before. He inspires me to do better every day. He never makes me feel neglected even when he's afar. He catered to my needs. He is such a hardworking man and responsible. It never makes me feel that I am such a noisance. Never. He appreciates even the littlest thing that I do for him. He loves and respects me. Aww. And he's my soulmate. They also claim that the passport bros are targeting countries where the dollar has a much higher purchasing power. So in that way, they are economically taking advantage of these foreign women. It's a very interesting one. These men aren't interested in finding a traditional woman. They just fetishize, hypersexualize, and stereotype women from developing countries and essentially leverage global economic inequality for their own personal gain. Go somewhere economically desolate to find someone more submissive. And y'all think you can exploit these countries that have these gorgeous young women that are open to pursuing American men. They are not experiencing success with their local demographic of women that actually won't tolerate their bullshit. So then they take their bullshit to a different country to then abuse, manipulate, and take advantage of this economic situation and you are relative in a country where your currency is trading at 30 times less a US dollar then of course you're going to experience a huge amount of inequitable power structure we're back people with the daily read this is the end of the show 
And I played those clips because I wanted you guys to understand. In America, 90% of the women chase 10% of the males. All of these men ain't no damn alphas. Get that out your head. Just because they got a million dollar stash somewhere don't make them an alpha. Period. So, these men in America are saying, y'all can have them whores. Because that's what they're turning themselves into. We're going somewhere else. Because what happens is, listen carefully, men. When you get your passport and go outside of America where you're disrespected, treated like a beta, treated like you're a nobody because they're chasing a bag, you are the prize. You're the prize in America too. The delusional women just don't know it. But when you get outside of America, you really are the prize. You are what you call an exotic man. Germany, Spain, France, the Asian countries, uh, the South American countries, no matter if you black, white, fat, skinny, you're an American man with a social security number. You're an American. You are the prize. You are the prize. Don't let these crazy, delusional people shame you into handling your business. You want to catch a flight for a week or two to go see other countries do that. If you want to go live there for a couple of years, do that. Because I promise you, I've seen this shit, man. I've seen it. Like these dudes, and then the economics about it. A middle age, a middle class man in America is damn near rich in some of these countries. That makes you even more of a prize. So what these people talking about, you taking advantage. That's smart maneuvering of your money. You got two or three thousand dollars in the bank, it ain't a million. Spend you three, four hundred for a plane trip. Go somewhere else. Enjoy yourself. Get treated like a king, like you are. And I find it funny how people will call you less than a king. They want to be called queens. But they run around here whores. America has a whore problem. And dudes is checking out. Like, man, y'all can have this. I'm out. Let's get back into this. Wow, I am struggling to make sense of this one. Are they really saying that just because the passport bros will get more value for their money abroad, they are automatically going to financially abuse the women there? Is that really true though? Well, a foreign woman has an answer to this question. Saying like men only go overseas because they're at the bottom of the barrier here that no one wants and they only want women that's easy to control, they want a maid, they want a servant, they want a doormat, etc. In what world that give you an impression that women overseas are easier to control, easier to manipulate, that we're not smart to see what a good man is? I didn't know this was a thing, but for some weird reason, there are men who are also bashing their passport bros. It's a bit cringe because I thought this was mostly the Western women responding to the passport bros. Hmm, it's quite interesting though, but let's hear them out. I just saw a tweet of a man encouraging other men to go overseas to find wives because it's too difficult to find one in America. And what I found mind boggling about the tweet is that there's still countries today where men have to have land 
in order to get a wife. A man has to prove to a woman's family he has land, a house, assets, he's financially stable to even get a chance at marriage. A chance at the woman. And then in our country, women tell men, oh, hey, can you maybe not text me at 10.30 p.m. on a Tuesday night to come over? I don't think this guy knows what he's talking about. Does he even know what modern women are asking for to even consider a simple date? In 2023, they are constantly upgrading their insane requirement. It's beyond the average man at this point. I'm not joking. I have asked the last three dudes I've dated for their bank account info on the first date. I don't judge people's actions. I look at the intention behind it. So like, why do you ask for that? Because I only want to date a wealthy guy that has money. This is the kind of dating scene that they are running away from. And I only want to no, deal so with guys that's paying bills. I am a gold digger. I don't care. Exactly. So if you want to come into my life and get my time and get my effort, mm -hmm. my energy, you need to be offering yeah. An epidemic of gold digging whores in this country. On a date with me, can you maybe bring flowers on the first date? With the flowers in hand, she said, why did you buy flowers? Should you bring flowers to a first date? The answer, unfortunately, is no. So nice, he got me flowers on the first date. Like, what kind of serial killer does that? And you court me? And the men go, this is too much. We're going overseas. We're going overseas. You know what, sir? Good luck finding a woman overseas who's gonna come back to this country and work to help pay your one bedroom rent. Well, actually. Alright, passport bros, step into my office real quick. Listen, the women are not mad that you guys are going overseas and basically participating in prostitution. What sisters are irritated about is that you go overseas and trick your money off and you're coming back home harassing sisters and telling them that they're undesirable. These women don't really care that y'all are going overseas and basically being tricks and simps because y'all aren't desirable anyway. Most men who participate in the passport movement are undesirable. Most passport bros are undesirable men. Wow. You are saying this because you are the standard of a desirable man? Hmm, that's interesting. Some Western women also believe that the whole passport bro trend was a joke on the internet and that these men really, really just want some attention from foreign women on the internet. What they really, really want, most of them, is just the attention that they're going to get from random women on the internet. They're not leaving the country they can't afford to. Definitely cannot afford a traditional wife. A few moments later. It is crazy. Half of the couples in this airport right now are beautiful Thai women with super basic white dudes. That last woman right there just got through talking crap about men going overseas finding women. Talking about they can't even afford to go overseas. Plane tickets ain't that much people. It's not. I've been on several planes. It is not. It is not that much to fly on a plane. This woman went over there herself. Matter of fact, the woman at the beginning of this segment, black lady, she said. Speaking to the amount of black men that are currently in Cartagena, but it is very rare for me to see a large number of black men on a flight that I'm on. It is very, 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 very rare. So to arrive and have a flight full of men, uh, but also to see other flights full of men, and the customs line was crazy long. So when I say that um, 
there were black men everywhere. I literally mean there were black men everywhere. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, it's just dusties, it's just broke men, it's just men that other women wouldn't date. I saw lots of very attractive men. I saw lots of men who looked like they had means. They, you know, they looked like they had their stuff together. They were, they were dressed well. They had good luggage. Like th these were not men that you're just like, oh, girl, nobody wants them. What was the most shocking to me as as I was waiting for my Uber, there were women in club dresses picking up men. And the time was very much like, oh, you've been here before, but it's your homeboy's first time. And he and she brought somebody for him. All the black men that I saw at the airport, I ain't seen none of them in the streets. She said when she usually flies, she don't see this many men. But she said this time, the whole plane was black men everywhere. And she said, these men wasn't no dusties. These were men that looked like they had a little money. Now, this is the thing. These are men that still get passed up. Because, like I said, 90%, y'all got to excuse my lighting. My light went out. Like I said, 90% of the women chasing after 10% of the men in this country that make over a hundred thousand dollars a year and it's only 10 percent of them that do that so these guys she's seeing at this airport these are guys that are thousandaires these are guys that they they could take care of themselves they got a little money they're not rich they're not six figure, figure guys but they like man the hell with this we out of here Ain't nothing wrong with it. You didn't want them no way. Crazy. Let's get into the last segment of this. Now that we know that the passport broom movement is no joke, maybe it's about time Western women sit back, relax, and reevaluate this trend. Instead of all the accusations, name calling, and disrespect. Maybe they should try to understand these passport bros and try to see if they can win these men back. Or is that not an option? Oh, okay. I've not seen any women crying over passport bros. However, I have seen a lot of women laughing at passport bros. Because we can replace men like you with cats and dogs, but you all have to literally go to another country because no other woman in your own country wants you anymore. That's what we call a whole cope, honey. I get it. You don't think highly of the passport bros. If you don't want them, then somebody else wants them. Why not go to another country where the women will love and respect you? And then you try to shame these guys for doing what they want to do. At the end of the day, it's their money. It's their time. If they want to go over there to another country, let them go to another country. Oh, you know why? Because at the end of the day, those guys won't be simping for you no more. Those guys won't be taking you out on dates no more. Then the pookies will have to take you on dates and do things that they didn't have to do in the first place. Honestly, we could go on and on with these videos from Western women about the passport bros. At the end of the day, the passport bro movement is no joke. In fact, it's even going mainstream with articles like this. Some of you westernized women, I don't need a man. I don't want a man. I can pay my own bills. I make my own money. I'm independent. I'm an alpha woman. Turn it down. The queen, the wifey, what happened to it? But when you reach your knockout stage at 30, 35, with two, three kids later, then you want a man? Ladies, wake up. My Dominican Republic Africans are Africans, brothers and sisters. They might speak Spanish, they might be a little lighter than the rest of us, but they are African. We must stay focused, my brothers, in the Dominican Republic. We must. He needs to stay focused. I like that last little bit right there. Um, like I said, people, it ain't hard to understand this. America has a whore problem. And 
guess what? Men don't want whores. They will have sex with a whore. They'll even come out the pocket and give you money. But we don't want to wife up no whores. And America has a whore problem. And not, I'm not just, listen, why you think, let me explain something to y'all, man. Come in, come in, come in, let me explain something to y'all out there in America. Why do you think you don't see prostitutes no more? They don't move to OnlyFans. They working in the doctor's offices, nurses. They working at Costco's. They work at the gas station. These are normal women who are secretly whores. Sorry, not sorry. I'm telling you the truth. And that shit hurts. So when people like me tell the truth about the situation that's going on in this country, people say, oh, that guy was hurt by somebody. No, I wasn't. Not me. I promise you. Even, even the little incident I got into a year ago, that shit didn't hurt me. I've been known myself worth. I don't mind cutting the woman's head off and telling her to get on about your business. A long time ago I started that. Understand something, men, and some of you ladies out here who get it, men are checking out. The average dude, the above average dude that people be trying to dismiss, they checking out. Like, all right, <laughs> bet. And what's happening is the top tier men already got to deal with eight, nines, and tens, turning them out into whores and wifing up one or two of them and sending the rest of them back. Now that the that the that the smaller guy, the middle man, who makes forty thousand to ninety thousand a year, not quite a hundred thousand. But the, but the lower tier guys, I let you have all of them. Man, you can have all of them. Take them bitches. Go ahead. And they going somewhere else. Y'all can have this. And it's upsetting a lot of people. Because what happens when a woman who spends all of her youth from 18 to 30 whoring, trying to find that golden ticket, trying to have that baby by the millionaire rapper, by the millionaire uh, 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 sports NFL player, once they get ran through and they turn 32 and they hit that wall, once they hit that wall with these babies and that little pudge around the middle, they still got a cute face. Those millionaires and these guys that got this money they fly to another country and go get a, a, a Venezuelan woman. All the black women that done had sex with all these years, these eight, nines, and tens, because they millionaires, they might have not had a baby by one or two of them, and then they send them back. When they send them back to the hood, they look around for the pookie that they left behind trying to get them to take care of kids that they done had by these other people. These dudes is gone. Like, man, we ain't messing with that. And it's getting people mad because they ain't got no fallback no more. Ain't no fallback here. That's over with. It's done. The fallback is done. Like, we ain't messing with that. We might even have sex with you just like the rich dudes do. But we ain't messing with that no more. That shit over with. Let's get it to the last segment of because I like L. L funny. Phrase with your little fifty thousand dollars. Your little two thousand dollars a month is doing something in Thailand, whereas in the States we broke, nigga. So of course. She take my money. Black men reacted. Yes, it's a trifling friend indeed. And started calling women gold diggers. Oh, she's a gold digger. So the women responded by saying, How can we be gold diggers if you don't have gold for us to dig? with your broke asses. Once again, degrading black men. And then this video came out. Richie Max zoomed to Thailand when he showed his beautiful Thai woman L bringing him breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And of course, black men loved how feminine, beautiful, and cooperative L was.
Black men stated they too wanted a feminine woman, just like Elle. Now, in that video, Richie Mack clearly stated that he never asked Elle to do any of the things that she was doing, that she was doing it all on her own. I don't ask for any of this. Not one time have I asked her to do this. But of course, black women who saw the video completely overlooked that part. And that's when black women got nasty with black men saying that they were only looking for a slave. You passport bros, it's, it's giving slave master vibes. <laughs> it's giving slave master vibes. That's what it's giving. It's, it's giving, you're looking for someone to be a slave. Not only degrading L, but degrading every woman in the Asian culture who takes care of their man. Now watch this. I did a video about black women going to Jamaica and getting a tune-up, if you will. Come a passport hoe. Question, when did you ever hear black men degrading Jamaican men for giving service to black women? Never. Yet black women degrade and insult women from other countries, especially Thailand and the Philippines, for being of service to black men. Black women started that mess. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, soon after Richie Mack dropped that video, that was the start of the Passport Bros movement. Now, I'm not 100% sure if Richie Mack's Zoom to Thailand video showing his beautiful woman L taking care of him started the Passport Bros movement, but it started around that time. So shout out to Richie Mack and his beautiful Thai noodle L. <laughs> Sorry, Richie. I know I'm not supposed to call her Thai noodle, but I just had to do it one time. Respect. Then there was a picture of black men showing their passports and urging other black men to do the same. Black men were not talking to black women. They were only showing other black men that they could do the same. Passport bros. This was never meant for women on mass to learn about. This is our corner of social media. Women discovered it, found out about this term called passport bros, and then began to open their big mouths and tell everybody about it. Black women discovered it in a place that they shouldn't have been in the first place. And now you've jumped in here and you got your feelings hurt. You're mad now. Now you got a lot to say on the internet. But yes, we didn't want you. And there's good reason. You had nothing to offer. You had nothing to offer me. That's why we don't care. We're not mad at the, we're not mad about that. Go, do your thing. They just want you to just leave and don't say nothing. But when we try that and we require it, every other female on TikTok has something to say. Now you telling black men, oh, y'all need to keep quiet. Y'all don't need to say nothing. Hush your mouths. Move in silence. We weren't moving in silence. We're talking to each other on the internet. We had our own boys clubs, passport bro clubs. We were doing our thing, we were communicating. And then y'all jumped in this shit and made it a big effing deal. Black women responded by trying to shame men and hurling insults, saying that black men look foolish in the picture. Brother, are you serious? You look ridiculous and that if they were gonna go overseas, they were gonna go over there and abuse those women in those countries. I'ma go overseas and get me a foreign girl. <laughs> Passport bros go to third world countries and purchase little girls and turn her into a breeding mare. They're little girls, you're sick. Hey, who you calling a little girl? So you can come over there and abuse their women? That as a black man, if you wanna roll up in some of these other countries, and try to abuse their sisters and their daughters and their nieces and their mothers and uh, taking them out, toe tagging 4.5 of them a day, you know what's gonna happen. You gonna get hacked up with a machete. So black men reacted and started showing videos of black women degrading men to the entire world. These passport bros are comprised of lonely, broke, overweight, middle-aged men who can't score women in the U.S. because they have nothing to offer besides a one-bedroom apartment with a chirping smoke alarm. It's so crazy to me how these women will get up on TikTok and talk shit about the opposite sex. Meanwhile, you can look right up in the video and tell that they are this hurt because they are projecting for what they cannot receive. This woman really got up here with her two-ton shoulders and her bonnet talking shit about overweight men. Ma'am, are you serious? Huh? I can look at you right here and tell that you are morbidly obese, ma'am. Fix yourself first before you talk about other people. How about that? 
I just want to understand what makes you spend $135 on an adult passport to go literally get the same type of hoo-ha that you can literally get from across the street. What do you see when you see this young lady? Okay, you see the septum ring, of course. Let me show you what I see. I'm gonna stop there right there real quick. Like I said, it's crazy how some of these people are five, sixes, and sevens. But the way they talking about how they didn't want us no way, bitch, you average. You ain't no eight, nine, or a 10. The guys at the top of the scale that you chasing, they don't even want you. It's crazy. I've never seen nothing like this. I just like, I, I, I recently, I've been knowing the feminist movement was going on in this country, but I didn't know it was on this scale. Like, like, until I started getting attacked by these people. Because I don't mind telling the woman where to get off at. To her face. Period. I don't mind. But I didn't know it was like this. This is this is an all-out gender war. And the and the and the Filipino women, they striking back. Like, yo, alright, you don't want it, we'll take them. You know. We ain't no little kids over here. They letting you know. And they ain't stay, they telling you, we ain't no little kids over here. We educated. We speak English. They letting you know. It was one video I had. I'm, I'm going to try to post it. Where a Filipino woman was speaking in English the whole video, talking bad about black women. Then she turned around and said, you know what? I'm going to speak to you in my second language. It was crazy. Let's get back to it. I see a woman that is wearing a shirt with a pentagram on it. Do you all see that? This right here is a pentagram. If you look right here, there's a horn, there's a horn. It's a devil shirt. So you have the woman wearing the devil shirt with the pentagram, trying to uh, <laughs> talk the moral high ground when it comes to passport bros. It got so bad that even Caucasian women started making passport bros hating videos. I've not seen any women crying over passport bros. However, I have seen a lot of women laughing at passport bros. Because we can replace men like you with cats and dogs. Now we all know that Caucasian men have been going overseas to seek companionship from women from other countries since we could remember. Caucasian women knew this. Question. Say something about this. White men since World War II have been going overseas finding companionship and wives. I remember I was in high school and our traffic cop that got the kids across the street from the neighborhood that was across the street, she was a little Korean lady that spoke broken English. In my mind, I'm thinking that her husband was Korean. I knew her her sons because I was in high school with them. Both of them looked at Korean, but they were mixed. They were half white, half Korean. So I passed by her house one day and seen her in the yard in a flower bed. I said, damn, that's the, that's the traffic lady right there. Her husband, big old fat white guy, waddled out the house. They been doing this. But since black men started doing it, it's a problem. You even got white women jumping in on it now. Where were you white women at when white men was going overseas finding wives? This is crazy. When did you ever see a video of a Caucasian woman disrespecting a Caucasian man for going overseas to seek companionship with those women? You didn't. Caucasian women started doing it because they saw black women doing it. Black women started that mess. Did the black women stop there? No, of course not. They decided to go further in trying to insult and embarrass black men for wanting to utilize their passport and started degrading women from other countries, especially those women from the Philippines, Thailand, and the Dominican Republic. 
And you pay attention to the passport bros. Like, they're getting women from, like, the DR, Colombia, yes. uh, the Philippines, Thailand. Like, women can that can speak very little English. Women that don't have and, education. And not, women that, that need missing, them. Women that, that, women that need women them. Are. At this point, women from those other countries reacted to what black women started. And then you got the nerve, ladies, to start talking crap about foreign women. Women that don't know you, that you never met, had nothing to do with. And guess what? As to be expected, those women start talking back. But you think foreign guys treat us like doormats? Lady, you have no clue. Foreigners have the general reputation of being more caring and attentive than anything we've ever known. Who told you otherwise? You call them all sorts of horrible names. And they responded. People be like, these American guys are going across the country to find a Filipina slaves. Girl, you're just not doing your job. You don't think they know about you? They know more about you, ladies, and I'm talking about black American women, than you know about them. Because they bother to observe your culture. Hell, how can they help it? It's all in Hollywood, it's on TV, it's in the music. They may not agree with it, but they don't say anything about it. Nevertheless, you open up that door. Because you're calling them uneducated, you're calling them poor, you're calling them weak, you're calling them vulnerable, you're creating a superiority complex where you are at the top and women from all these other countries are at the bottom. Now let me tell you something. If you were really superior, the men would not be leaving and you would not be single. Question, when did you ever see any of the women from any other country going off on black women from the matrix before you saw black women starting to make these passport bro hating videos? Never. It only started because Asian women were reacting to black women disrespecting them. Black women started that mess. Are you starting to see the trend here? Black women are only getting reactions to the mess that they start. And as a reaction, we are now seeing more black men not only not dating black women, but not acknowledging them even when we pass them on the street. Uh, let's take a quick poll uh, by a show of hands. How, in the past year, how many of you all have walked by a black woman and just kept looking forward in the past year? Damn. Okay, okay. How many of y'all have done it more than once in the past? That's sad. Now, I don't agree with that. I'm going to be straight up with you. Even if I was to get a wife from overseas, if I pass a black woman up, I would still speak because that's the type of person I am. But these guys are saying, late ladies, listen, they done been overseas so much dealing with these exotic women, they don't even look at y'all the same. That's crazy. It's crazy on their part. But it speaks to what's going on in this country. Let's get back to it. Last year. All right. How many of y'all have done it more than five times in the past year? Damn. How many of y'all make this a normal practice when you see black women on the street? <laughs> instead of saying, what's up, sister, or even acknowledging her presence, y'all just walk by and look straight. That's a fucking normal practice. God damn. Ladies, this, is, this, this is the climate you created. My thing is this. If that's what's going on, why would you think we would be hunting you down in the club? This is nothing more than a black man reacting to something black women started. Now I could go on and on about this, but I think you get my point. So for this woman to say, you can go to other countries and date other women, we don't care, but keep us black women out of it. Listen, all we say is leave us out of it. Is absurd. It's very difficult for black men to keep black women out of it when every time they see us doing something they disagree with, they voluntarily throw themselves in it. Not only that, they do it with insults and in the most disrespectful way they possibly can. On behalf of all black women everywhere, we absolutely do not give one solitary about you going to another country and finding a wife. Many women, especially black women, will open their mouths and just let their thoughts fly out without taking into consideration the feelings of others. In other words, they don't think before they speak.
And with all due respect, this black woman is no different. Think about it. She's sitting in another country, Thailand, sitting in a Thai woman's house because we all know that L lives there, sitting on a Thai woman's couch with another Thai woman sitting on the couch, not to mention, or should I say also to mention, her husband is sitting right next to her. And the way she's presenting her so-called defense of black women was disrespectful. Take a look at the black woman sitting to her right on the screen. Look at her posture. She's leaning away from her and her arm is rested on the pillow which is on the Thai woman's lap. Also, notice that her arm is touching the Thai woman's arm. This tells me that she's signaling to the Thai woman that she's not down with the black woman who's speaking. She's letting the Thai woman know that she has nothing to do with what the black woman is saying, or at least the way she's saying it. Everything that this black woman said and the way she said it did nothing more than further prove why black men are leaving the matrix and finding women from other cultures to bear bond with. As a result, her representing black women was an epic fail. No disrespect. I'm only glad that Elle was not in that room. So in conclusion, everything that black men have been saying about black women and what Asian women have been saying about black women is nothing more than a reaction to something that black women started. So if black women want black men to stop talking about black women, then black women stop disrespecting men when we're doing something that doesn't even concern you. Black men going to other countries to seek companionship from traditional women have nothing to do with you. And since it's all broken, dusty men that you claim you don't want that are leaving the matrix, wouldn't that make things better for you? If so, then stop making videos with the shaming. And Give y'all context of what was going on in that video. One of the passport brothers saw black people over in the Philippines. He greeted them and offered them to come back to his apartment and do an interview with them to ask them how were their travels. They come back to the apartment now his wife L wasn't there, but it's her house too. So she wasn't there, the, the L, the, girl, the woman he's married to. The black guy with the dreads is married to the Filipino, she was pretty too. The black guy with the dreads is married to a Filipino woman that was sitting on the end of the couch. The black woman that was talking bad about black men leaving the country to find wives she was sitting in the middle the woman that was sitting next to her i like they like friends that travel together with their husbands so as the black woman is talking bad about filipino women and black men the other black woman started leaning over towards the filipino woman because the filipino woman was getting upset the black guy with the dreads, he's sitting there. That's his wife. You're talking bad about me because I done came over here and found me a beautiful wife that loved me. And you over here talking bad about us because we left the country. We don't want to deal with that. So he's sitting back. He ain't saying nothing, but I can see it on his face. The guy with the dreads, you can see it on his face. He pissed off. And she just spewing all kinds of crazy foolishness out of her mouth talking about we don't care about y'all leaving the country. We didn't want y'all no way. Y'all didn't have nothing to offer us. It was crazy. And the, and the black woman sitting next to her, body language is everything. When I'm in a group of people and I'm telling crazy stories, don't think I'm not watching people coming in and out your house and everything moving around me. I'm watching fake smiles. I'm watching genuine smiles. I test people a lot. Even, even if I'm talking about politics, sometimes I tell a street story, sometimes I tell a political story. It depends on what crowd I'm in. I want to see people's reaction. Body language is a lot. And that body language, that black lady that was sitting next to the other one, she didn't want to have nothing to do with that. She was leaning, you could tell she was trying to give the Filipino girl support. Like, man, I'm glad you found a black man. It's cool. I ain't with that. Whatever she on, I ain't with that. 
you can look at the body language and tell that the black woman was out of order. I'm going to wrap this up. This was a long show, two hours long. I might do a part one and part two. And the insults of black men. But if you decide to continue to do so, you will continue to get a reaction from black men out of it because what you do is you go out and you spit you spit this bullshit to the world and now the whole world we as black women we already at the bottom of the motherfucking totem pole everybody at the very fucking bottom so who put black women at the bottom of the totem pole because i got us we finna take over the world we finna be performing at the bet awards hmm. the oscars hmm. planet fitness popeyes clear parenthood hmm. and they give me I'm trying to get my stretch. I'm trying to get my stretch. And we be eating this ass today. Get them pan beads, honey, honey packet. Honey pack. And um, you said bundles, sorry. Bundles, bundles. That's what we doing. That's what we doing. Babe, babe, babe. That's what we doing. Oh, wait. Y'all, I've been on it. We gonna fight. 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 Condoms, because we can't be raw dogging these niggas. We're not getting pregnant and we're not catching no STDs. I'm not this year. Not no this course. year. Not. Do you want to fight? 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 I'm not going to no more doctors for your ass, nigga. And I'm not having no much more kids because I have three kids. No more yeast infection. I don't. You want to fight? I don't. I don't. I don't. Move, stop, grab me, stop, grab me. Move, move. So I'm guessing black men are responsible for all of that too, huh? So the last thing we need is our brothers, whether you at least look at me like your sister or your cousin, they shitting on me, right? Making other men not want to date me because we're problematic and all these other things, right? So all we saying is just like, shut up, nigga. Shout out to all the beautiful black queens out there who remain respectful to black men and could clearly see why black men are deciding to leave. Um, I just see myself supporting a movement of men who choose to go overseas and find their women. There's nothing wrong with that. This message is for the passport bros. I support this 100%. If I had a son, this is exactly what I would tell him to do. The pleasant and wonderful voice of Elle. Stick your sail back, man. <laughs> the music, the music, the music, the music. Hey! Don't forget to subscribe. Hell is crazy. I like her already. If I ever go over there to the Philippines, I'm going to call them up. They wilding out. She looked like she was buzzed up a little bit. But you can tell that they got serious around here in America. And even though I ended this show up talking about the black experience, black women, this is not a black woman thing. This stretches all the way across the, the, the color barrier with all the women. We have a whore problem in this country. A whore problem. Now, one thing I want to say to end this up. I learned this almost two years ago. I had a friend of mine who I used to fool around with every now and then. You know, it was one of them type of, uh, I could just call her up, be like, what you doing? Come on through. Bring a bottle over there, we'll kick it, we'll drink, and we'll have sex. Now, this woman told me one day, because I ain't seen her in a few months, she said, uh, I'm celibate now. Men. I heard a woman tell Sam, uh, Kevin Samuels this. He didn't know what that meant. He caught on to it. He was like, ho, 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 ho. You come out here to have babies in a, in, a, in a womb that's already been used. How you gonna try to lock it up now? But what he didn't get was, I'm finna put y'all men on game. When a woman in her 30s, 40s, and 50s come with that, I'm celibate, Read between the lines. She's celibate to men who she think is lesser than her. But she was celibate. Understand what I'm saying? This is the new whore lingo. Because a lot of these women are in the church. 
So in front of the deacon's wife, she's celibate. But behind closed doors, she a celibate to the deacon's husband. Get what I'm saying, people. You men out there that watch my show, understand what that means. And this ain't, I didn't just hear this in Tennessee. I heard this in Florida. I went to a car party. And it was this chocolate girl came in there. Fine, stacked, looking nice. Asked her how old she was. I'm 42. I said, okay, you about my age, close to my age. So as the night went on, I said, so what's up with you? She said, I'm celibate. I said, uh, she did, She must not have thought I knew what that meant. I said, oh yeah, I bet you freaky too. And I slapped her on her thigh. I didn't slap her on her ass, I slapped her on her thigh. And she just looked at me. I already knew what that meant. Read between the lines, fellas. These people out here in America have turned into straight up whores. Some of them try to hide it. And they got this new way of hiding it with that whole I'm celibate until the right man come along. Get out of here. Stop it. Like Kevin Simon said, you would have had whole human beings come out your body. You ain't celibate. You celibate. You will celibate. But you ain't celibate. A man pull up in a Lambo. You ain't celibate no more. But you a celibate. <laughs> I'm out, man. This is crazy. I'm going to get the last word to Elle. Because uh, I like what she said. Save yourself, black man. I only want you for the money and the clothes. And for the bills. That's it. If you ain't getting my hair done. If you ain't getting my nails done. If you ain't doing nothing for me. Then I don't need you here. It's not 50-50. It's not 80-20. It's 100% to zero. She's absolutely horrible and disgusting for saying that. I do hope she ends up single the rest of her life because she doesn't deserve a man. Once again, women are not chasing men for, I guess, love anymore. They're chasing them for things that they can be provided for. And we're not your father in this matter. I do hope the video goes viral and nobody ever dates her. I'm being so serious. But Save yourself back, man. <laughs> the business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. Busy.